Hello, dear students. We will continue with the chapter of seed and germination. In this video, we will be covering the requirements for germination and certain experiments which will prove that these requirements are actually needed for a seed to germinate. So first of all, you need to do what exactly is germination. Germination is the process of formation of a seedling from an embryo. An embryo is present inside a seed. The embryo has the radical and the plumule that I already told you. So the embryo will later on form the seedling once it gets the suitable conditions for germination. And what are these conditions which are needed for germination? The first condition needed is water. This water will be absorbed through micropyle. Once the water has entered, inside the seed, it will make the seed coat soft. The radical of the plumule of the embryo will be able to emerge out and reach into the layers of soil for absorption of water and minerals. The chemical reactions will start occurring inside the stored food, whether that stored food is in the endosperm or the cotyledon. Once that the chemical reactions occur, the food is made in a diffusible form and the growing embryo can get that food for its nutrition. The suitable temperature which is required for germination is 25 to 35 degrees Celsius. This temperature will make all the enzymatic activities occurring at a proper rate. If a high temperature or low temperature is provided, the rate of germination is affected. It may not even occur. A very low temperature will inhibit the growth of the embryo. The embryo will not grow at a very low temperature, whereas a very high temperature will destroy the delicate tissues of the embryo. The embryo will not develop in that case. In tropical countries like ours, a temperature which is on the higher range is suitable for the plants because the plants have adapted their body for the growth in these conditions. So there, the temperature required may be a little higher for the optimum growth of the seed during process of germination. The third condition is oxygen. Now, oxygen is required for providing energy in the process of respiration. This oxygen will produce ATP. This ATP will be used to give energy in the process of cell division and cell growth. Cell division also multiplies and cell growth also increases rapidly during the process of germination. Now, when germination occurs, the first structure which comes out of the seed is the radical. The radical emerges first, the plumule emerges a little later. The radical emerges because it has to absorb water and minerals. It has to fix the growing seedling into the soil. So to enable this to happen, the radical has to develop as the first structure during process of germination. Now, you must have seen that seeds, when they're sown very deep in soil, they fail to germinate. Seeds which are sown just on the surface, they are generally eaten by birds or other insects and animals. But seeds, if you sow them very deep in soil, they fail to germinate because they do not get adequate amount of oxygen for respiration. They are unable to breathe because oxygen is not available for respiration. Oxygen will not be available. That means AT production will go low and then the rapid requirement of energy is not met. Being deeper in soil, the soft tissues of these, they push, they are unable to push through the layers of soil. And the layers of soil means the embryo, which is developing the radical and the plumule. The plumule will not be able to emerge through the layers of soil. The soft tissues of hypocotyle or epicotyle, as the case may be, they, are, they get damaged and therefore these seeds are unable to form a seedling. So seeds sown very deep in soil, they fail to germinate. Now there are certain experiments on germination. We'll discuss them one by one. First one is that a seed needs water for germination. If you take two containers, two beakers, in one, you take dry cotton wheel, uh, wool and you place seeds which are dry on top of it. So dry seeds, maybe gram seeds you place or bean seeds you place. So you notice that the seeds do not germinate in this case. 
But if you take seeds, place them on wet cotton wool, keep the seeds, uh, soak the seeds overnight in water and place them in what wet cotton wool, we notice that the seeds germinate if suitable conditions are provided to them. So here the suitable condition is that they have got water. So in the presence of water, they will germinate. They all have oxygen. Both of them have got oxygen. Both of them have a suitable temperature. You're keeping them in warmth. Here, no water is present. In this case, water is present. So the seed is able to germinate. That means water is needed for germination. The second experiment we have is that air is needed for germination. So what you have is the seeds which have been uh, soaked overnight in water. These two seeds have been placed in two beakers. In the first beaker, beaker A, we place boiled water after cooling it. When you boil water, all the dissolved oxygen in that water will escape. And then you cool this water so that it comes at room temperature. Over this water, you pour a layer of oil. Oil will prevent any atmospheric air from entering in the system. So the seeds in this beaker will fail to germinate because they have no air. They have warmth, they have water, but they don't have air. But in this case, when you place the seeds which are soaked overnight in water on wet cotton wool, they have warmth, they have air, they have the water. So these seeds get all the requirements for germination and they germinate. So here we know that Air absent and air present can affect germination. In this case, you did that water affects the rate of germination. So for germination, both water and air are needed. The third one is that a suitable temperature is needed for germination. Now you have two beakers again. You keep seeds soaked overnight in water in both of them. You place the seeds in cotton wool, which is having moisture, but one of them you place them in ice cubes, the other one you place outside. The one which is kept in ice cubes will fail to germinate because suitable temperature is not provided. Whereas the one which is placed outside in the atmosphere gets the suitable condition. So here, even though air is there, even though water is there, even though uh, moisture is there, but suitable temperature is absent, so the seeds fail to germinate. And here all three conditions are met, so seed is germinating. So this can be explained by the three bean seed experiment also. You place three bean seeds on a, a ruler or a scale such that the first seed is dipped in water, the second is partially in water and partially in air, and the third one is exclusively in air. So we notice that the one which is in water may start to germinate a little, but afterwards it'll stop because it doesn't have oxygen for respiration. The second seed, which is in the middle, is getting both air and water, so it germinates. The third seed, which is placed above, gets water, gets a suitable temperature, but does not gets air, gets a suitable temperature, but does not get any water. So this seed does not germinate at all. So we notice that if the seed has got suitable temperature, it has got oxygen, it has got water, only then a seed will germinate. So these are the three requirements for germination. Now, this is one experiment wherein we can prove that oxygen is needed for germination. You take two conical flasks, fill alkaline paragolol in one and fill ordinary tap water in the other one. On a wire gauze, you take seeds which have been soaked overnight in water. We attach the wire gauze inside the seed with a thread and we close the cork. Alkaline pyrogalol is an absorbent for oxygen. It will remove all oxygen from the air. So after a day or so, we notice that the seed which was placed in the flask having alkaline pyrogalol has not germinated. But the seeds which were placed in the flask having water, they begin to germinate. So this is how you can see it up close. These seeds do not germinate, whereas the seeds which were placed in water, they begin to germinate, indicating that oxygen is needed 
for germination. If oxygen is not provided, the seeds do not germinate. Only when all conditions are met, that means a suitable temperature, oxygen and water, only then the seeds will germinate, otherwise the seeds do not germinate. Now you have a small question for all of you. In which of the following containers will the seeds germinate? Container A has moisture and oxygen, but the temperature is four degrees Celsius. Container B has warmth and oxygen, but it is dry, that means without water. Container C, in all these containers, you have placed soaked seeds. Container C has got warmth and moisture, no oxygen because of alkaline paragraph. Container D has got warmth, it has got moisture, it has got oxygen. And here an additional thing, light is also present. In container E, warmth is there, moisture is there, oxygen is there. That means all conditions of germination are there. Light is absent. So if you were to see these containers from A to E, container D and E have got warmth, moisture, oxygen. But here, what about light? Light is not a condition needed for germination. Light may or may not be present. It is needed for photosynthesis, yes, but it is not needed for germination. In the first container, temperature is four degrees Celsius, so no germination will occur. In the second container, there is no moisture, so no germination will occur. In the third container, there is no oxygen, so no germination will occur, but germination should occur in container D and E, which have got all the conditions needed for germination. So as you can see here in container A, there is no suitable temperature, so no germination is occurring. In container B, there are dry conditions, so no germination can occur. In container C, there is no oxygen, so germination cannot occur. And in container D and E, Germination will occur because all conditions are there. Warmth is there, moisture is there, oxygen is present. Whether or not light is present, that does not affect the rate of germination. Light is needed for photosynthesis, but it has no role in germination. So that's all we will be doing today in this topic. The remaining types of germination we will do in the next video. Hope you have understood it all. Thank you very much. God bless you all.